Hello and welcome to the Public Crochet YouTube channel. Today I'll be showing you a tutorial on how to make the Tunisian smock stitch, which is the um, main stitch in the heels and valleys beanie. This is a Tunisian in the round pattern and it comes in adult medium size. You can find the um, pattern on my website along with, you know, other information on the pattern. Today, I'll just really be showing you how to work the stitch, the smock stitch in the round. So the forward pass and the return pass. This pattern requires a Tunisian in the round hook. I'll put all the links to the hooks below. You can find them in my shop. I'll be using um, eight, an 8mm eight Tunisian um, hook. Uh, you need a pair of scissors, a stitch marker, a, ne um, a yarn needle, and some tape measure. Also, you need to make sure that your yarn is in two balls. So this is my leftover yarn from that, from my sample. Um, this, so you need to make sure that your yarn is in two, two separate balls or two skeins or, you know, whatever you, whatever type of yarn you, you're using. This um, pattern calls for chunky weight, sorry, bulky, <laughs> bulky weight yarn. Um, I'm, I'm using Malabrigo Chunky in Rhodesian Ridgeback. So that's what this is. I used two skeins. So I used two skeins and made them into balls and then I made this and then I made some other things and this is just extra from that for the purposes of this tutorial. All right, um, first things first, we're gonna put a slip knot on our hook we're going to chain an odd number of chains, right? So depending on what um, size you want to make and stuff like that, you would you would um, chain whatever cor whatever number of chains corresponds to the size that you need. To put to make a slip knot again, um, in case you didn't know, I am left-handed, um, so. Everything I work, I work from a left-handed perspective. But um, to make to put a slip knot on my hook, I take the tail end in my left hand. I um, put it over the right side, and then turn it over. That way, I have my pretzel. And then I grab my hook on the east side, pull that through, and. There. Of course, you can use any method that you like to place a slip knot on your hook. And um, you can go from there. I will work um, a few chains and I'll get back to you. To make a chain, you wrap your yarn around the hook and pull through, like so. To make another one, you wrap around the hook, pull through. Wrap around, pull through. You make as many chains as you need for your pattern. Now, um, <clears throat> I'll see you back at the end before we join the um, chains in a circle. For the purposes of this tutorial, I made 31 chains. And to join um, your chain in the round, you, of course, if you're right-handed, you hold your your hook in your right hand and you know if you're like me you hold it in your left hand you take your chain making sure that it's not twisted and then you bring your first chain over to your hook you insert your hook in the back bump of the chain right here in the first back bump like so using the same ball of yarn that you you used to make the chain you get the working yarn, wrap around the hook and pull through. So you've made, you've pulled up one loop. That loop counts as your first stitch and this is where we place our stitch marker. This is important because the smock stitch is it's a one row repeat when worked in the round. So that creates an offset on, um, on the previous row. So um, it's a the smock stitch is a Tunisian two together yarn under. So your stitch marker would move between the Tunisian stitch together for the first row, the yarn under for the next round, and it'll alternate between those two. I'll show you what that looks like, but it's important that you place your stitch marker on this first stitch. 
Now, as for Tunisian crochet, as is very common with Tunisian crochet, we're going to pull up loops in the in the back um, bumps all around. Because we're using a hook with a cable, we can pull up as much as we need to, and then they will all just sit on the cable, and then um, we'll walk the return pass. So to pull up loops in the back bump, we do just what we did here. You insert. Hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. That's two. Insert. Yarn over, pull up a loop. So you would do that for as much as you can, and then I'll come back when it's time for the return pass. I've pulled up a few loops on the hook, and now we're going to work the return pass. When working in Tunisian crochet in the round. Um, this is the one time where you would turn your work, right? When you're working Tunisian crochet flat, you don't have to turn your work at all. But when working in the round, you have to turn your work to work to work the return pass. Because we're using a cabled hook or a set of cabled hooks, we would slide our work to the other hook. Right. like so and then we're gonna take our second ball of yarn you would have a lot more than this this is like I said um, remnant from you know some other project and then you would take your new ball of yarn wrap it around your hook and pull through one this counts as a chain one at the beginning of the return pass. The return pass for the um, Tunisian in the round is different from, it's a little different, and this is where it's different. After you make this chain one, this is the only time that you're gonna make the chain one in the whole project. From here on out, every return pass, you yarn over and pull through two, like so. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we'll pull through two, and you continue. As for Tunisian crochet, until you have three loops on your hook. I like to make sure that I have three loops on my hook because it helps to um, maintain my tension. And so um, we're using the same color, right? Um, for this hat, we're using the same color. Usually, Tunisian crochet, sometimes, actually, Tunisian crochet in the round requires, you know, that you use two separate colors. So one color would be for the forward pass, the other color would be for the return pass. And of course, for this hat, you are welcome to use any colors you choose. You can, of course, use um, a different color for the return pass. So what that would be is your, this, um, windows in here will be different colors right so your this the the diamond shape is your forward pass and then the space on inside is your return pass so if you're using a different color it would look like a you know like a nice um it will give it a nice look like a picture or you know texture so um i said that to say that if you you were using two colors you would know you would stop Right, your return pass when you had one color of the um, one loop of one color and two loops of the other color. But since we're using one color, I guess you cannot ignore all of that and stop when you have three loops on your hook because we want to leave one loop from the return pass and one loop from the forward pass, and then we need a buffer. This helps us make sure that we don't, you know, pull through by mistake or <clears throat> excuse me, or you know lose our stitches so i like to leave three loops on the hook okay so uh, when we're done with that we slide our work again to the other side like so and now we're ready to continue with the return pass oops you have to watch your yarn so it doesn't get tangled right so that's my return pass and here is my forward pass and then i will continue pulling up loops all the way around until um, I have enough or until my hook can go no further and then I will work the return pass. 
So I'll do that off camera and come back and show you um, how to continue with the first stitch here. See you in a Right, so now I have finished my return. I've completed the second round of return pass. And of course, yours will change depending on the number of stitches that you have. Remember, I, for the purposes of this tutorial, I only have 31 stitches. Now I have three loops left on my hook. I'm going to slide my work to the other side. And then we're going to start working in the first stitch. Right? So here is our first stitch with a stitch marker. The stitch, uh, the, the pattern repeat is a um, Tunisian two together yarn under. And this is how that goes. You Tunisian simple stitch two together, yarn over, pull through. Then before you work the next two, two um, Tunisian two together, you yarn under. The difference about this um, and the pearl stitch is this one you have to hold it. You hold that yarn under with your index finger while you work the second Tunisian simple stitch two together. And when you do that, you can let go. Right? So now we have three stitches. Before we go any further, I'd like to move my stitch marker up to the first stitch. Like so. And now we can keep going. Right? Now we're going we have another yarn under. Hold, Tunisian simple stitch, two together, pull up a loop, let go, yarn under, hold, Tunisian simple stitch, two together, pull up a loop, yarn under, hold, Tunisian simple stitch, two together, pull up a loop. Okay, as you can see, you can you can begin to see our, you know, our heels and valleys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, <laughs> that was a joke. But anyway, um, so yarn under, hold, Tunisian simple stitch two together. Yarn under, hold, Tunisian simple stitch two together. You will work that for as many stitches as you can, as your um hook can hold. Um, and and because I have a small amount of stitches. I can't do I can't go too far. Now I'm gonna show you the return pass. We slide our work to the other side. And remember we left three loops on the hook, right? So we're gonna work these as normal. Excuse me, let me get some more yarn here. All right. So we yarn over, pull through two, yarn over and pull through. Two. Now we're at our first stitch. If you you can see here that the stitches are crossed. What we want to do is we want to make sure that the yarn under is we go through the yarn under first. In this set of two, we go through the yarn under first. One way to do that is to make sure you're going to through the middle of these two. Because that's going to maintain our pattern in the front of the work, right? So I'll show you. We yarn over and pull through these two, right? And then we're going to yarn over and pull through these two. That's this stitch and this one. And the way to do that is just go through the middle of that, right? And now you can yarn over and pull through the other two. So you always want to yarn over and pull through the yarn under first, right? Because if you look here, that's the yarn under. We want to pull through that first. Because if we don't, if we pull through the bottom one first, it's going to mess up our um, stitch pattern. You see that? That's not That's not good. So we don't want to do that. We want to pull through... Sometimes you may have to just bring it to the front, you know, just to make sure that you're, you have the right one. But you yarn over and pull through, just go right through the middle of that, and you're good to go. Yarn over, oh, excuse me, 
go right through the middle of that and you're going to go and you know that you've done it right because you're going to have a sort of X here as you can see that right yarn over pull through two and over okay and the the same rule applies we always want to make sure that we have three loops left on the hook right and now we have we have five right one two three four five so we yarn over and pull through these two yarn over pull through two and now we have three okay we slide our work to the other side and continue our stitch pattern yarn under hold TSS 2 together yarn under hold TSS 2 together yarn under hold TSS 2 together yarn under hold and you will continue for as many stitches as your hook and cable can take I want to show you um, where you, how, where your stitch marker goes I think I should be able to do that <clears throat> so stitch marker right oh I am pulling this too much okay let me walk the return pass let me show you that again okay just in case you need it the return pass is worked Remember, we're working in, in between these stitches, making sure that this one goes first. Okay? So we yarn over and pull through two, like so. Yarn over, pull through two. 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 And a rope through two. For right handed crocheters, I have a video um, in the pattern. I think I'll, 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 link, I'll link it down below as well that shows you, you know, how to do the same thing but right handed. And she also uses, um, she doesn't use a keyboard hook, she uses a um, straight double ended hook. So you can see how, you know, that works. And she's also making a hat, which was something that I found out when I was looking for. Um, videos on the Tunisian smock stitch in the round so there you go I hope that's helpful for you now we're back to where we have three loops on the hook until we stop and continue on the other side I want to show you where to, where to place your stitch marker on the next round so we're going to yarn under and work into the last stitch and the first stitch, right? Right. Because this is, because of the stitch pattern, it's offset. Now, if we move the stitch marker here, the next row, we're going to have to move it there, you know, it'll be backwards and then backwards and backwards and backwards. And then before we know it, our first stitch is going to be somewhere like here. And we don't, we don't want that. We want to keep our first stitch. I mean, it's easy to see your first stitch, but just in case you need it, um, the next best place to put your, your stitch marker is on the yarn under. So we have done the first stitch. And then we yarn under, work the next TSS2 together, and then we place our stitch marker on that stitch. That map counts as our first stitch. Okay. Now that counts as our first stitch because if you tr this is our first stitch, right? If you trace it up, that's our first stitch. This is not our first stitch. This is our first stitch, right? And the next round, our first stitch will, will um, be the first the TSS two together. 
right? So you always want to alternate between the TSS2 together and the yarn under. So here it was TSS2 together, yarn under, TSS2 together, yarn under. That way you can continue, you know, you can maintain your rows and your stitches and stuff. So that's important for when you're trying to work your decreases and knowing, you know, how many rows or where you need to start your decrease in and all of that. So that's where that comes in. That's why that's important. That way you know exactly, you know, so you don't start your decrease like in the middle of the, in the middle of the round. You want to start at the beginning of the round. And you would, of course, continue just as we have been doing, yarn under, hold, <coughs> TSS2 together, yarn under, hold, TSS2 together, yarn under, hold, TSS2 together, yarn under, hold, TSS2 together. Okay, and you will work. So this is, of course, the brimless version. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of this video. This is a brimless version. So you would just make your um, chains, however, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, however many chains corresponds to the size you need. And then you would just dive right into the pattern and start doing the um, smock stitch all the way up to the top as, you know, as high as you want the hat to be. Um, and then you would, you can add your... Then you work your decreases. Your decrease is a, it's a three, three round decrease. It's very, very simple. And then you close it up and add a palm if you need, if you, if you prefer. You can, you don't have to use, this is a faux fur palm. You don't have to use that. You can, you could use a, you can make a yarn palm with a, um, pom pom maker, you know, or you could go palmless. That's fine. <laughs> you know, that's your, that's your choice. Um, I wanted to share how to work the decrease to show you, you know, how to work the decreases. So we're going to start our decrease on the first stitch after you have worked your um, beanie up to your preferred height. And of course, you can make it more slouchy. You know, if you want, you just add more rows to, you know, to the height that you want, that you prefer. It's, it's really um, customizable. But when you get to the point where you might begin to work your decreases, I'm just going to work our regular stitch all the way up to here. And then I'm going to show you how the decrease is worked. My, um, my, main, point, my main reason for showing you is that the work will get tight, right? Unlike um, knitting where you can switch to double pointed needles, you can do the same here. Right, so here we are at the at the first stitch. Because we're going to decrease here, what we're going to do is we're going to um, yarn under, right? Because that's this is the last last one. Then we um, Tunisian simple stitch two together, and then we don't yarn under, right? I'm going to move this up. That way, um, I know where to continue from. Oops. Okay. Got that in. Right. So I did the simple stitch one and then without any yarn under. Then I'll do the next simple stitch without with no yarn under. Okay. As you can see, I'm tempted to yarn under, but because we're decreasing, um, we're not going to yarn under. So we would do a Tunisian simple stitch twice. Sorry, once. And then. We we'll just keep going all around, okay? And um, so you do that for as many times as the pattern calls for. And um, when this gets too tight, um, there's a tip in the pattern that says, you know, pull the forward pass hook. And this is what that means. When this gets too tight for you to continue, when you, after you've decreased a couple of times, you're going to see that it gets tight. So what you do is you pull this, oh, excuse me, you pull this all the way, right? This, when it stops here, then you can take this part and just keep going. Okay. Because we're working in the round, this goes that way. Okay, so you're not missing any stitch, you're not losing any stitch, but that's how you you would um you would work continue to work the forward pass while you're decreasing when the circle gets too tight. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, I hope this video has been helpful. Um, please like, 
comment and um, subscribe and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.